Okay, welcome back. Um, what we're doing today is we're out uh, with the Utah Fish and Wildlife, um, at the Utah Airboat Association and Wasatch Widgeons uh, doing nest boxes uh, for our waterfowl. So we're gonna be going through a few different types of uh, different nest box structures and why we're using them, how we're maintaining, maintaining them here in the spring. And so um, follow along. Uh, and we'll kind of walk you through on what we're doing, how we're maintaining them, where, where we're placing these structures and what benefits they have. Uh, you know, if you're interested in this type of stuff, make sure you get involved in a local conservation group. Uh, if you're here in Northern Utah and you wanna join with us and do some of these projects, uh, it's Wasatch Widgeons. I'll drop a link to their page in the description. If you want more information on the organization or any of the projects they're doing uh, that's where you can find it so anyways here we go uh, we'll get going on these these nest structures We're getting out to our first goose box of the morning. Uh, this is what they look like. Basically, it's just the bottom half of an open box. Um, usually up on a pole elevated. Um, you know, in here, you can see we're kind of right on the edge of a pond here. Um, this kind of gives just a uh, security for the geese to get up away from predators. Um, looking in here, it looks like there's some eggshell. So this, this box was used last year. So what we're gonna do is go through and clean out all this hay. Uh, you know, geese do not collect uh, any um, nesting materials. Uh, they just use what's there. So um, we'll give them some, some new hay and I'll show you in just a sec how uh, we try to keep that in there. Uh, for so the wind doesn't just blow it out Okay, so we got this fresh grass hay from this year uh, That we're gonna be putting in uh, these boxes have little drain holes that we've put in them So as these guys are putting all this grass hay in here for the for the bedding uh, Those holes will help it drain out and also those holes what we're gonna do is use uh, some baling wire and we will make an X across here and tie it up underneath. That way, uh, if the wind blows, that wire will hold this bedding down and our efforts don't go to waste in a hurry. So um, that's, that's a nice full uh, nest box with some good hay in it. So you got the wire, Jesse? Um, we'll just go th through and take this wire and tie it down. And that is about all there is to these goose platforms. I don't know how many areas in the country use these, but uh, here in Utah, uh, our our goose population has used these, and they've been very, very successful. So um, it is just about the end of February. The geese are looking for somewhere to nest now, so we'll get these going, and they'll they could be in them within days. So. Uh, We'll we'll move on to a, a mallard hen house next. Okay, right, so we're just finishing up with the goose platforms that we're doing today. Now we're switching over to some mallard hen houses. Um, here's one that was from last year. We're gonna go ahead and take this off the metal saddle, show you how we take care of it for the year, uh, and get it in um, in a condition that. Uh, a duck can use uh you know these are intended for mallards but till and gadwall will use these as well so um let's get this pulled off the saddle and get this old grass out of there and we'll show you how we're taking care of them for the year so we've taken this hen house off the saddle now uh what we're gonna do is just unroll this uh just a, it's just wire along here uh, and then a wire tube that's created. If you're interested in in uh, the measurements or how to make these, 
you want to uh, reuse this? Y'all comment below and there. I can look at doing a video on actually maybe making one maybe spread it out to show you. More. So, and uh, you know, some of this grass wasn't too bad. We had a really dry year with the drought last year. So what these guys are doing now is they're just taking uh, the this grass and we're just gonna lay it out across this entire wire. Anyways, and then uh, just rolling up the the hen house here with the so that wire traps all that grass on the inside. And we're gonna re-secure the ends of it with some baling wire uh, just to, so it holds its shape. And then the last step before we're putting it back on the saddle is we're filling this tube about halfway with some grass. Again, ducks don't collect nesting material like a songbird would. So by giving them some, some bedding material to make their nest in, uh, it's more likely that this will be used. Um, these hen houses are up to 80% more effective at a hatch than a ground nest. So um, now that this is all ready, it's rethatched. What we're gonna do is just bring it back out. There's a, a little look at the saddle that this kind of just sits in. Throw a couple little safety wire ties on there. So that way the wind and uh, if anything bumps it, it doesn't fall off. And uh, these, uh, these ducks should be looking to get in these and make their nests here in the next couple weeks. Okay, we're out at a different location, a uh, different day than Farmington Bay doing the rest of the nests, uh, out doing some wood duck boxes. So just gonna kind of walk you through. Um, Utah doesn't have a huge population of wood ducks, but definitely growing. Um, the area where we are today, they said that they hadn't seen a wood duck in this area um, for almost a decade until uh, several years ago when these boxes got put up. And now the population has definitely started coming back. So just kind of walking through this wood duck box here. Um, okay, a couple of important aspects with this is first it's, it's out in the water here and there's this cone. And this is for predators, especially raccoons. So they can't climb up and get in. Of course, they can, we're under trees here so they can kind of jump up on top. But it's just to help try to mitigate uh, the predators getting in here. Okay, so we put on our boxes, we put these little spring latches, um, which definitely help raccoons from being able to get in since they can't put, figure this out usually. Okay, we're gonna open this thing up and see what it looked like at the usage for last year. Um, but you can see here, there's a bunch of down in the opening. So we'll see if uh, it looks like it got used last year. Um, this box is kind of starting to break, so we're just pulling a screw out of here to uh, to be able to access this. We just got this box opened up. There's a bunch of down in here with some eggs that didn't hatch from last year. Uh, kind of sifting through to see if there's any shells used. But as you're doing, if you're putting these up, well, one of the important things that some guys don't do that's important is this wire. There's some wire mesh. It's hard to see with the lighting. But anyways, a lot of people don't know it, but the wood duck chicks will climb up this with almost a little tooth on the front of their bill. And that's how they get out of, of the houses. Um, then they'll just jump into the pond here, swim away. So that's kind of the gist of a wood duck box. Uh, what we're going to do is, because this one's damaged, we're going to swap it out with a new box this year. We'll put fresh wood shavings in here. And the hens will come in here and make their nests. Uh, 